Hi, folks. Some of the most important sets that we want to talk about are infinitely big. They're sets of numbers that are unlimited, that don't have an end. And so these are called infinite sets. And you need to start to learn the names of all of these sets that I have on this slide. But luckily, most of them are quite intuitive. N just refers to the natural numbers. And you might have encountered other classes where the zero is not considered a natural number. In my opinion, this is just definitional. So I, I consider zero a natural number because that's the way it's treated in set theory. But if you don't count zero as a natural number, then when I say natural numbers, you have to hear me as saying natural numbers plus zero. O is just the, the, the name for the odd numbers. E for the even numbers. Z, Z is a little more confusing. That's just used for the integers. Uh, and I'm going to use that for the positive and the negative ones. So these are all the whole numbers, positive, negative, and zero. So one, negative one, two, negative two, et cetera. Q, this is the name, Q, think of Q for quotient, like uh, in a fraction, uh, division, because every rational number, Q is the name for the rational numbers, can be expressed as a fraction of whole numbers. So, you know, two thirds, seven eighths, or uh, one, the, the integers are also, uh, rational numbers because one can be expressed as the number one over one or two over two. When I say rational numbers, I'm just going to think of the positive ones. So zero and upward. Those are the ones that can be expressed as fractions. Re R is for the real numbers. R includes all of the rational numbers, of course, but all of the irrational numbers too, like uh, as well, like the square root of two and all the other irrational numbers. So these are all infinite sets. And what we're going to do is use logic in order to reason about different sizes of infinity or whether there can be different sizes of infinity, whether that even makes sense. Uh, it might seem weird to you, but we're going to actually treat infinity as a number. And I know that in grade school, your teacher might have told you infinity is, a num is not a number. Well, uh, they're wrong. Infinity is a number. Uh, what they meant is infinity is not a natural number. Sure, that's correct. The natural numbers are all finite numbers. But when we think of the size of the natural numbers, that is not a finite number. That's an infinite number. So I can put the cardinality bars. Remember these vertical bars refer to the cardinality of a set? Well, this is the cardinality of N. We're just going to define that with this symbol here. This is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph, uh, sort of like the letter A is at the beginning of uh, the Roman alphabet. And zero, the subscript zero here, you, it's often called aleph not or aleph null. So when I say aleph not, what I mean is the cardinality of the natural numbers. This is definitional. And we know that this is not a finite number because uh, this goes on without end. There's no finite number. You can actually easily prove that aleph not can't be finite. Uh, so, so take it as definitional that aleph not is just the size of the natural numbers. What I want you to do is think about the size of these other sets, O, E, Z, Q, and R. Are all of these the same size as the natural numbers or not? That's the fundamental question which we're going to pursue. Let's take the first version of it. What about the odd numbers? So what I want you to do is tell me whether these two sets have the same size or not. Pause your videos and see if you can figure this out. OK. It's very tempting to say the answer is no here because, look, all of the odd numbers are in the natural numbers, but it also has other stuff too. So the natural numbers have to be bigger than the odd numbers. Well, that's a natural thought, but that's actually wrong. These do have the same size. And what we need is a new concept in order to understand how to compare the sizes of, of infinite numbers. Because there's two ways to talk about the size of a set. You can just count up the things in the set, and then whatever number that is, is its cardinality. The trouble is, that works great when you're dealing with finite sets. Like if I just give you the set containing zero and one, count those up. There's two things in it. And that's the same size as the set containing zero, one and three. It also has two things in it. But there's a different technique that works for finite and infinite sets. And it's the idea of a one-to-one -one correspondence. This is just an association between two sets such that one of the things in the first set is paired with exactly one thing in the other set so that every object in each set gets paired with exactly one of the other. It's just pairing them off. And if you think about it, if there's a one-to-one -one pairing between objects between two sets, they have to have the same size. Because for one of these, there's exactly one of these. How could there be a difference in size between them if there exists a one-to-one -one correspondence between them? So this is the cool thing. We can create a one-to-one -one correspondence between n and o. I pair zero with one, one with three, two with five, etc. So even though it seems like O is smaller than N, it seems like N is bigger than O because it's got all of O in it plus some other stuff, this one-to-one -one correspondence shows you 
that infinite sets don't work like that. It can have it can have the same size, even though it seems like it should be bigger. So the answer is that yes, these are the same size. And the reason is because there exists a one-to-one -one correspondence between them. And this is a really cool, this is an amazing result. This shows you how, how unintuitive, how fascinating the concept of infinity is. Okay, let's keep going. Let's, E is easy as well. So let's talk about Z. How about the integers, positive and negative? Is this the same size as the natural numbers? So pause your videos and see if you can figure this out. Okay, that was your chance to pause your videos. I'm hoping that you said these are not the same size uh, because of this problem. What if I tried to pair them off like this? You see, there's one ellipsis out here. This goes off in one direction infinitely. And, and you could pair it off to go off in that direction infinitely, but this does not work. This is not a one-to-one -one correspondence because what about the number negative three? It never gets paired. You see, these all both go off infinitely and we never get back. We never loop back to consider all of these. So it seems like the trick that we use for the odd numbers fails here, and therefore z has to be bigger because it go has two infinities or something. Well, that's wrong, actually. They are the same size. And this just again shows you how fascinating and amazing the concept of infinity is. Because look, just because we failed to come up with a one-to-one -one correspondence doesn't mean none exists. That's like failing to come up with a formal proof. That doesn't mean there is no proof. The problem might be because there's no proof or the might, problem might be because we're not creative enough to think of it. And that's what's the situation here. If we can give you any one-to-one -one correspondence, then they have to be the same size. It doesn't matter if other attempts fail. And look, all you have to do is rearrange them or you flip-flop. You see, we wrote Z this way because this is the easiest way to picture it with the positive ones going to the right and the negative ones going to the left. But that doesn't mean that's the only way to write Z. What if I flip-flop? I go zero, one, negative one, two, negative two, et cetera. Then this infinity trails off only in one direction. And this shows us how to pair things with the natural numbers. I'll pair zero, zero, one with one, two with negative one, three with two, four with negative two, et cetera. And now we can show you that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between them. Therefore, the cardinality of Z is still aleph naught. We've only got one size infinity so far. So that's sort of proof so far in this video, we're just talking about all these ones in red. All of these have the same size as the natural numbers, aleph naught. And we can use these one-to-one uh, -one correspondences in order to demonstrate that. What that raises the question is, is, is there only one size infinity? Does every infinite set have the same cardinality? Is Q also aleph naught? Is R also aleph naught? Well, those questions are actually a little more complicated, and we'll talk about those in other videos. Thanks.